Hi, I'm Sophie Khan. I am a digital artist and sculptor. It's funny because I've been working with technology since 2003, but until really about two years ago, I have only presented my work in a completely physical form. So I work with 3D laser scanning, but it's not a device that's designed to capture the human body. And so when you train it on somebody who's moving and breathing, um, the scanner kind of breaks down and generates, I don't like the word glitch, but it generates fragments, we'll say. Um, and it kind of misunderstands the body. And so my work for a long time has been kind of trying to unpack these emotional resonances that are created by technological imaging. So the way that it fails, the kind of the darkness, the um, the way that the representation of this mechanical eye is almost kind of violent. Um, that's really interests me in my work. But I'm also coming from a history, like thankfully past, but still feeling very present of chronic illness and disability and so I'm always interested in kind of ways that the fragility of the body can also be represented. I mostly show within a gallery setting, within an institutional setting. And when COVID happened, I had to move out of my studio, which was in Times Square. I had two kids who all of a sudden were not in school and I couldn't take the train. And you know, exhibitions just weren't really possible for a little while. And then even when things came back, I think the market was very, very sluggish. And I started to look for ways to show my work digitally and ways for it to exist on a screen. So I made this piece for the In the Bardo show for Feral File, which was an augmented reality sculpture and it was a kind of digital ghost. It was rendered, it's a crouching body and it's rendered in a glass material and it feels very, very insubstantial. It's sort of intentionally difficult to see on the device and on the browser. So I put that show on in Mozilla Hubs. I rebuilt the space. And the really fun part was that I was able to rebuild it with absolutely zero constraints on the physical scale. And I built this huge, bizarre museum space where the kind of angles didn't make sense and the work was massive. And that lit a little bit of a spark for me, just being able to show my sculptures, my 3D work in an interactive form on a screen. And everybody who experienced that show sort of said how different it was to seeing a piece of art in a gallery. You know, in a gallery, you can't touch it you're conscious that it's valuable, you're, you're keeping your distance and you only get a few viewports. And then that's sort of kind of the extent of it. You go, you see it, you leave. And then most of the time, like 90% of your audience sees it on Instagram anyway. <laughs> so they're seeing a photo of your sculpture. Um, but showing work in the browser, there's like a lightness to the sculptures. The files, I can make them thinner because they don't have to obey the laws of physics or gravity in any way. They don't have to not break when you 3D print them. They don't have to stand up. And people can play and spin and fly over them and see inside and it's a really quite a different relationship that people have with the form. I think for me the web has been an interesting way to open up a different kind of access into my work and I'm hopeful that the, th the two can kind of work side by side as things develop. Honestly, the more time that I spend reading about, you know, the environmental impact of cryptocurrencies, I feel that I can only get behind proof of stake currencies. I just don't really think that I can sort of stake my, you know, my kind of reputation as an artist on anything else. So that's, you know, one reason that Tezos is, is much more compelling to me as an artist. I have been wanting to mint an object for a while and then it didn't feel like a wonderful time to do it. Um, but then my frequent um, colleague and collaborator, Colette Robbins, she's a part of an artist collective called Organic Material. And they put together a collection on object and I was a part of that. So that was my genesis on object and on the Tezos blockchain. And I think we raised almost, I wanna say almost 17,000 US dollars with 39 artworks within a couple of days, which was really amazing. What I'm really interested in is the ways that artists can expand the definition of their practice. Technology has always been just one part of my workflow and not the entirety. So I think there's room for people whose work is completely completely born digital, who were native, who only make NFTs. And then I think that there is room for artists who are also working in galleries and museums and institutions 
to use it as a way to increase the accessibility of their work and to engage with different communities and different audiences. So I think it has absolutely made things more accessible for me and it's funded you know, a bunch of my, my physical works that I struggled to get funded using the other models of art world funding. So that's been super helpful.